Culture is a closed system of thinking and values of the sort I am denouncing. And the, it is the greatest barrier you, to your enlightenment, your education, and your decency is your culture. And I realize with joy that here I skirt the bounds of political correctness because everyone is running around saying, you know, recapture your roots, get in touch with your Swedishness, your uh, <coughs> Irishness, your whatever ishness. And that's all very fine, but I think it's your human that may have eluded you in all this ethnocentric breast. <laughs> well, why should culture imprison us and somehow place a barrier between ourselves and our true humanness? Well, I think I said at the beginning of this thing, culture and ideology are not your friends. They are not your friends. This is a, a hard thing to come to terms with because a certain kind of alienation lies at the end of this thought process. Culture is for the convenience of culture, not you. How many times have your sexual desires, career aspirations, financial dealings, and aesthetic inclinations been squashed, twisted, rejected, and minimized by cultural values? And if you don't think culture is your enemy, ask the 18-year-old kid who is given a rifle and sent to the other side of the world to murder strangers if culture is his friend. Uh, these extreme examples should bring it home to us that it's a kind of a con game. It is, in fact, strangely enough, a kind of virtual reality. We, we have been led to think of virtual realities as something on the screen of a computer or presented through a headset, uh, but that's an electronic virtual reality. The primary technology for the building of virtual realities is language. Once you start talking about race pride, loyalty, our destiny, our God, our mission, it's like building virtual realities and people begin to treat these things as though they had the substantiality of real objects and to build their lives uh, as though these things were real and what is this it's a demunition of humanness you're choosing to limit yourself to a cultural reality whether it's the reality of being Witoto or Orthodox Jewish or whatever it is it's a smaller world than the simple hardware you were born into this universe with. Somehow, part of the package of being a living, thinking being is that you get a universe inside of you. You know, you get a galaxy-sized object inside you that you can access. And there, there are the mountains, the rivers, the jungles, the dynastic families, the ruins, the planets, the works of art, the poetry, the sciences, the magic of millions upon millions upon millions of worlds. And this is apparently who we each are. We're a little bit of eternity sticking into three-dimensional space and for some reason occupying time in a monkey body. But when you turn your eyes then inward, you discover the birthright, the, the existential facts out of which this particular existence emerged. And it's a great secret, a great secret and a great comfort because it means, you know, mystery didn't die with the fall of Arthur or the fall of Atlantis or the fall of anything. Mystery is alive in the moment, in the here and now. It just simply lies on the other side of a barrier of courage. And it isn't even that high a barrier. It just is a barrier high enough to keep out the, the insincere and uh, the misdirected. But for those who will claim it, in the midst of the historical chaos of the late 20th century, they become the archaic pioneers. They become the first people 
to carry the Ouroboric serpent around to its own tail and to make a closure. And to the, to the degree that any one of us has this, uh, this connection back to the archaic in our life, it makes where we have been make a lot more sense and it makes where we're going seem a lot more inviting, which it really is, I think.